Oh, there's a time tunnel. Oh, I'm being sucked back through time. Yeah, the thing is, I've been a, a number of times to this museum, uh, but every time you see something new and something different, something exciting that triggers another memory. There's just so much stuff here. I mean, calling a museum of brands doesn't quite do it justice. It's not even a museum, it's just kind of everyday life put in front of us. Inside this building are the triggers to all our memories. Hmm. I've got that trim phone. It's weirdly emotional and it's difficult to explain uh, quite, uh, quite why. Oh, yeah, here we are, see, in the 70s. This is very much my uh, era when I was growing up. Now, every TV show in the 70s pretty much had a spin-off. We got uh, the George and Mildred dice game. So even something like a sitcom would have a, a spin-off game. Presumably it was a dice game um, themed around an unhappy marriage. All this stuff, as a child, I wanted, but really you could only probably have one of them. I remember my cousin, they had a lot more money than us and they had the Rod Hull's emu game. I wanted so badly to have the six million dollar man with the bionic eye and the doll had basically just a hole in the head with a tiny plastic <laughs> magnifying glass that you could look through and supposedly see what a, a bionic man could see. But in fact, uh, it was all you saw was a slightly opaque, distorted uh, view of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and look at these, the giant cans of beer. The <laughs> Young's four in hand, the Watney's party seven. Of course, with COVID, it would have to be a, a party six, wouldn't it? Um, I remember the little moose with the with a cardboard lid that you would, it would have a little tab that you could peel out. Um, and then you'd scrape it. The, the bottom would be curved up to reduce the amount of moose that was actually included. But you'd scrape it so hard that you bowed it out the other way. And these variety packs, see, to me, that says holiday. We'd go and have, you know, a week in Pevensey Bay or Eastbourne. And part of the treat would be that we'd get a variety pack of cereal. Weird stuff, the Frey Bentos steak and kidney pie. I and mean, they must still make that. Do they still make the Frey Bentos steak and kidney pie? I might go home and get one. Evil Knievel, I mean, he's just a guy on a stunt bike, but he was massive. I couldn't afford that. But my cousin, you know, the guy with the money. Um, hi, Simon, if you're watching. He had this, uh, uh, and every now and then we would go around there and he'd get it out and he'd you know, wind the thing up. I mean, I dreamt of having a chopper. This idea that everyone had a chopper, it's just not true. I had a, I had a bike that, was, uh, that once belonged to the postman. I'm getting quite angry now. <laughs> and in the 90s, of course, we see the advent of the Alcopop, an alcoholic drink aimed at children. Brilliant idea. Um, <laughs> actually, look, there's a box of milk tray. There's a couple of bottles of hooch. There's some bags of Monster Munch. That, to me, is a classic night out in the 90s. Mr. Blobby tomato sauce. You know, why tomato sauce? You know, it's stuff that you've forgotten about, that you'll see the packaging here, you'll see that something will remind you of some experience, some uh, emotion that you had uh, back then. It's quite astonishing. Um, and I don't understand why there aren't more people here. <laughs>